Mario 64 has always been one of the biggest speed games of all time, but that's only because those runners did not know about Gun Mario 64. During my blind run of Gun Mario, I was already starting to pick up on a lot of speedrunning maneuvers. Some intended, some not. Since this game was the greatest thing to ever happen to me, I had to learn everything I could about this masterpiece. And oh my god, this game is broken. I started out by watching Easy Speezy do a speedrun of this game, but then I just took his route and altered it a little bit and called it mine. I made a Google Doc of all the stars I needed to get and felt good enough to start a blind-ish run. The goal of this is not to collect every star fast, but to collect the 70 fastest stars fast. Yeah. Starting out in Womp's Fortress, this world is all about speed. Realistically, you should be finished here by the two minute mark, but we are currently watching my first attempt at this. This specific run opens with me failing cannonless, which is promising. And also, here is a fun glitch that happens constantly throughout the run. Whenever the game spawns a new star, the camera always hard cuts to wherever it's located. However, if you pull up the menu and quickly close it, you regain control over Mario. The catch? The camera has a stroke and you're invisible? You have to just go off intuition alone, so sometimes you get an early star, and sometimes you die tragically. Also, you get the 100 coin star here, which is a 99 coin star, despite how slow it is, you just gotta get the coins so you can buy weapons later. So then we quickly back out and take it to Cool Cool Mountain. It doesn't really matter which of the first worlds you go to, as long as it's not Bob on Battlefield. This world starts with our first Out of Bounds clip and makes the slide seem really slow somehow. Our next goal is to shoot the penguin with the speed and elegance unlike any sociopath you've ever seen. And then there's a really cool skip on the wall kickstart, but I am <laughs> I am, I'm, uh, not good at it. <laughs> I later found a really good route in Jolly Roger Bay, but at this point in time, I was just flailing like a lost child in Walmart. And to my international viewers, yes, this is what an American Superstore looks like. After you collect enough stars in the lobby, you can perform an extremely precise clip Out of Bounds in to the basement loading zone. Doing this completely eliminates the need for Bowser in Dark World and Bowser in the Fire Sea. However, that's only if you can consistently perform this trick, which I, I cannot because it sucks. I spent an hour trying to do this and then I realized I should probably go pick up a football and touch grass. A singular sentence does not summarize that hour full of pain, so allow me to make it worth two sentences. Actually, I'm going to make it a third sentence and add on by saying, I'm going to create a category beyond any percent, out of sheer spite for this one skip. So you know, in Super Mario 64's 70 star run, you're still forced to do the Bowser fights despite having ample opportunity to skip them, you still gotta do them. So, haha, <laughs> yeah, that's why I'm not skipping the Bowser fights. As an homage to the original game, yeah, definitely not out of, um, <clears throat> in incompetency. So, instead of any percent, let's just call this Bowser percent. So, Dark World, right? This is essentially a Roblox obby with a boss fight at the end, and all you gotta do is gun him down like, yeah, there's not a tasteful way to end that joke, huh? Just get the key from Bowser and haul ass to the basement. I started out in Lethal Lava Land, and there really aren't any strats in here, you just kinda hold W and get the W, you feel me? Eventually making your way to Hazy Maze Cave, the run in Gun Mario is very similar to the run in Super Mario 64. Not in terms of what you do, but in the fact that it fucking sucks. You use the jetpack to clip out of bounds once, and <laughs> hear me out, then you do the exact same thing twice, wait, 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 then you do the exact same thing thrice, oh, and do the exact same thing thrice? Uh, and then you mix it up for the last star by going through the maze. Or you could do the exact same thing five times if you didn't get your fix yet. On top of that, these out of bound clips are incredibly easy to mess up. And wow, wouldn't you know it, time loss. However, I did make a wrong turn in getting one of the stars and uh, curiosity got the best of me. Oh, what the fuck is that? Oh my God, I tapped out, that was so scary. <laughs> Wait, I, I need you to look at something else. <laughs> Shifting Sandland, <laughs> am I right? A lot of the stars here are very self-explanatory. Shoot bird, get star. Climb pyramid, get star. Get star, get star. All of these lead you to the next Bowser world as well as Dire Dire Docks. Your first two stars in Dire Dire Docks are literally begging to be collected, whereas the other two are not. Also, there's a secret star right here, but I didn't really tie into that joke, so yeah. After that, I bought the rocket launcher from the Big Pianta. This opens up a lot of the other stars that were previously unobtainable. For some reason, instead of walking up and activating secrets, the rocket launcher works. It's like the game detects the missile as Mario, but only his interactable ability, not a uh, hurt box. I, I, 
I don't know, this takes us back to Cool Cool Mountain to quickly collect the secret star. Then just use the rocket launcher to farm coins and buy additional weapons. And now it's time for everyone's favorite first level, Bob-omb Battlefield. Everything in here happens to be exactly how you'd expect it. Except the secret star. You just use the rocket launcher again. Then by the time you get to booze, you hope that you have 300 coins, and I didn't. So I just did what I could until EGAD would give me the time of day. This world has a lot of cool stars, but stupid ass past me didn't know any of them, so we'll come back to this later. Looking back at this footage, I have absolutely no clue why I decided to go to Bowser and Fire Seed this late in the game when I was just standing right next there in dire dire docks. I, I, mean, I don't really know, but just realize that if you look back at your past mistakes and cringe, it only means you've improved. Which I guess if you look at it that way, I improve a lot. So now that we're upstairs, it's time for Wet Dry World. This one is a bit confusing at times and is for the worst of reasons. So let's talk about parallel universes. The secret star has a lot of different spawn placements and it all depends on what the last star you spawned was. In this early run, I got lucky that the last star I spawned was bob on Battlefield Secrets because that's, <laughs> that's the only one that works. If you spawn a different star before it, the Wet Dry World star will spawn far as fuck away. The reason is because each star you spawn creates a new timeline. All stars exist in these universes, but their coordinates are slightly different. This star likes to store the coordinates from the last star you spawn for some reason. I think. I think this is right. So what could be the same coordinates on one map would not add up on this map? The only working solution doesn't even really add up, but it's good enough, I, I suppose. The rest of Wet Dry World isn't nearly as interesting, but we'll get there. Snowman's Land is extremely straightforward, as all of these stars are essentially just hanging out in the open. Tall Tall Mountain is just scaling the Tall Tall Mountain, but three times. Tiny Huge Island is just kind of doing what you're supposed to. After all that, you go up upstairs and get three stars from Rainbow Ride and gently walk up to the staircase before you fight Bowser in the sky. There are tons of tiny optimizations that can be made, but it's ultimately just an obstacle course until you get to the boss fight, which also feels like an obstacle course. Gun him down and call time. I accidentally turned off the timer for this run, but it ended up up being about an hour and a half. So yeah, that's it. That's Gun Mario 64, an incredibly unoptimized fashion. I honestly don't know why I spent so long explaining this because my routing has changed several times since that first recording. So let me show you how to improve everything you just saw. First off, instead of designing your route to farm coins, there is a DEPA code left in the game to unlock all weapons. Is this intentional? Is this fair? Who cares? Just mash V and P on the same frame and you'll quickly unlock every weapon in the game, which changes the routing entirely since you have the rocket launcher from the start and it makes the early Bowser fights a massacre. Speaking of massacre, fuck clicking, am I right? What if I just set my scroll wheel to click? What if I just made an auto clicker? What if I did both? The answer is the boss fights become so much easier, dear god. I got faster at Womps, which gives you three stars before you even hit a minute. In the original game, you wouldn't even be in the castle yet. I created my own routing for Jolly Roger Bay. Essentially, you go to the last star first, open jetpacks, collect star. This opens jetpacks for future runs, which makes this star easier, as well as the red coin. For whatever reason, jetpacks run on a timer that freezes when you go underwater, so despite this being a bit of a time loss, getting the jetpack and everything, you can save it by flying back onto the ship and finish red coins. Also, I got incredibly good at that menu glitch. There are so many stars that you can save time on by simply trusting your instincts. Remember when I mentioned that rocket launcher can also be Mario? Well, it saves you a tall, tall mountain climb because if you get the shot and mash the interact key on the monkey, he just strikes up a conversation with an explosive. Since you don't need coins, you eliminate all coin stars except for Snowman Land just because it's so fast. Tons of enemies give you groups of five coins when you kill them, but there is a catch because of course it wouldn't be simple. First off, it's a 99 coin star. Secondly, this game is programmed to give you a star when you hit 99 coins. Makes sense, right? However, if you have 97 coins and collect a blue coin, wow, you have 102 coins. The coin counter never actually registered you had 99 coins, so you just never get the star. It never spawns. Bowser and Fire Sea is actually surprisingly frame tight because you need to be Usain Bolt on the tracks to get in that first cycle of the elevator, and then you gotta be even faster to make the second elevator. You can also activate the boss fight from below and drain his health like you're pretend ruining my computer. I do hope that TikTok clock eventually gets patched in since all the stars there just softlock you for some reason. But if those stars worked, you would get to replace a lot of the slow and boring ones, and I would just be so happy. I can't believe I'm saying this, but Gun Mario 64 is genuinely one of the sickest speed games ever made, and I just hope they'll someday let me play this at GDQ. The game has no right being as dope as it is, but you could say the same thing for something like Battle for Bikini Bottom. 
except one is probably a little more respected in the speedrunning community. I'm sure most of you are dying to speedrun this game yourself, so, um, let me give you a quick little guide real quick. <clears throat> Start the game, X-Cast, go to Wonks. Smash VP, do this backwards jump, and then get the first star. Get the second star, climb up the tower, get the third star. It's that simple. Get eight coins, get this star, exit the castle, you're done. Does it really matter what order you do these stars? No! Cool, cool mountain, do the slide, do the slide. Shoot the penguin, shoot the penguin, shoot the penguin. Wall kick star, and then you shoot for secrets. You're done, go back. Jolly Roger Bay, hit the jetpack, get the star. Get the jetpack, get the star. Get the jetpack, get the coin. Get the coin, get the coin, get the coin, so on and so forth, get the star. Find the cave, get the star. Find the eel, get the star. Find the ship, get the star. Clip out of bounds, back out. Go to Bowser, run fast, kill Bowser, leave. Basement bitches, but turn left right here because it's faster. Hazy Maze Cave, get the jetpack clip out of bounds, get the jetpack cl clip out of bounds, get the, uh, <clears throat> get the jetpack clip out of bounds, clip the jetpack cl clip out of bounds, and then you go through the Hazy Maze Cave. Maze Cave, yeah. Jump out, lethal lava time. Run and get this star. Get six coins here. Get this coin. Then come back, get the coins so you can tab glitch into that star. Go to the volcano. Get those two stars. Run backwards. Who gives a shit? Grab those two stars. To the desert. Get this star. Touch four pillars. Get that star. Use the rocket for secrets. Get that star. Jump into this cave. Run backwards for swag. Get that star. Shoot Klepto for the hell of it. Get the star. Do Bowser's. Go fast. Fight Bowser. Kill Bowser. Dire Dire Dogs. Get this star. Get this star. Go down here. Secrets. Get that star. Swim for a while. Blow it up, get the star. Swim for a while. Or the sub, get that star. Exit to castle. Run across the hallway, go to booze. Boo, 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 boo. Tab out, get the star. Blow up the bookshelf, get the star. Red coins, tab out, jump up the gap, get the star. Shoot boo outside because it's optimal. Shoot boo while you're jumping up the building, get the building, get the star, grab the whatever, get the star. Go downstairs, kill all the boos. Run upstairs, try and shoot the eye through the wall because it works sometimes. Then shoot the eye, get the star. Woo! Bob on battlefield. Do the last star, activate jetpacks, get island star. Talk to Koopa the Quick, beat Koopa the Quick. Find King Babom, kill King Babom. Blow up the chains. Do the secret star and haul your ass to wet dry world so it works. Sit here, clip out of bounds, it's cool. Teleport, get the star. Touch the switch, jump on the shroom, get the star. Climb to the top, activate jetpacks, get the star. Go to the wharf, walk backwards, get the star. Shoot the secrets, let it spawn in God knows where, get the star. Tiny huge island, kill them all, get the star. Climb to the top, shoot the secrets, make the swag jump, or not, who cares. Go into the side of the mountain, get eight coins. Climb to the top of the mountain, get a free star. Climb to the mountain again, there's another free star, but this time in a hole. Tall, tall mountain, snipe the monkey with a rocket launcher and have a casual conversation with him. Climb the mountain, climb the mountain again, climb the mountain one more time, but this time go into the cavern. Snowman land, bitch. Shoot the wall, get the star. Shoot everything. Get the coin star. Make sure you got 99 though. Red coin time. Tab out, walk towards the star. Go into the igloo. Shoot the ground, get the star. There's also just a star lying right here. Get that. And also there's another star lying on top of the bullies. Get that. Woo, rainbow ride, final world. Do the carpetless jump. Go down there, jump on the spring. Go this way, get that star over tricky triangles. Woo, do the exact same thing, but go right. And now get that star. Start off the exact same way, but go backwards. It's a little slow, but just follow the path you'll get it and now we're at bowser's just do this really fast and then you just fight bowser kill him get an auto clicker i don't give a shit <sighs> And that's it. In regards to the run, I just became more consistent with the skips I already knew, and that's just because I practice. It's it's crazy how those two things are related. But what's crazier is that this is the game that I practiced. I could have riches beyond comprehension if I just learned how to speedrun Minecraft, but no, I uh, uh, <clears throat> gun Mario 64. Yet somehow, if you sit and think about it, it just makes sense. I feel like a lot of the time I saved wasn't necessarily by learning new strats, but just optimizing the existing ones. Once you have a solid route, it just becomes about how fast can you do that. Well, I mean, I guess <laughs> this is just what a speedrun is. So with everything I've learned nearly perfected, it was time to put it all together. This was the run. A run that's four minutes faster than the original game 70 star run. Yet for some reason, they did not accept it on the leaderboards. I mean, it's still Mario 64, right? No, <laughs> apparently not. So, how else could I prove myself in a game like Gun Mario 64? A lot of speedrunners race each other for pride, competition, but mainly for content. So I reached out to Super Mario 64 speedrunner extraordinaire, Simply. 
who is most known for having parents. Oh my baby! Oh my god! I knew it was coming! The rules are simple. We both race to collect 70 stars and defeat Bowser. The catch? I'm fucking strapped. Three, two, one, go! Shit. All right, you got a cutscene? All right. What the hell? How did you just skip into that? What? How did you just go into the castle like that? What was that? Are you? Oh, you have cutscenes to watch? <laughs> oh. Oh, that sucks. No, he's going so fast. He's choking. He's choking it all. Imagine taking the elevator and whomps. Imagine having to use a gun to shoot down the bridge and whomps. All right, how many stars do you have? I have to work so hard for these stars, and you could just like, fucking run through them. Well, it's, no it's about practice, you know? I mean, how long have you been at this? Not doing red coins? I don't know if you can. <laughs> Wait, actually, I think I remember that, too. Some stars just don't spawn. He's cheating again. Just going out of bounds. Imagine. Imagine that. Yeah, you're going to slow down a lot. You probably start to get nervous, and then that's when mm -hmm. I swoop in and then take the W. Your nerves definitely play a huge part in Gun Mario 64. I, I feel like I'd, I'm shocked I didn't realize this much broken shit. So I played, that, I played for a while. I got 70. Yeah, dude, if you want to do 120 deep. star, you just win. Because... I can't even do that. Damn, this this volcano movement's insane. Wait, was that bully part of the... Oh my god, he's popping off. Dude, that's so stupid that the rocket launcher works for the secrets. That's so wild. It also uh lets you... <laughs> you skip a tall, tall mountain climb because you can interact with monkey with rocket launcher as well. Like, you did all your fast stars, so technically, although it's a nine-star gap, it's really more like a three-star gap because... These stars are going to be fast as fuck. And then when you factor in late game, it's really just like a, a one star gap, you know? We're basically dead even. Yeah, that's that what point. I was thinking. Look at this loser standing on all the pillars. I know! <laughs> don't make fun of me. This guy stands on pillars. That's so embarrassing. My mom told me no one would notice. All right, now I got to do my favorite part about 64 speed runs. Please show me. You ever swam before? No. I'm not winning. I'm coming to the realization. It doesn't matter. Late game, whatever. Nerf the M16, Mix Morris, please. <laughs> nice rocket launcher through the wall. Okay. Why does it do that? Wait, I actually what? had no idea if it would work. That's the first time I've done that one. What the fuck was that? <laughs> 34 stars, really? Wait, did I skip Toad? Oh, I know I forgot Toad. I'm going to go back down. I've decided. See the good out of bounds right here. I'm falling. What am I missing? I'm missing a star in here. Doesn't even know the route. Actually, I missed a star too. I can't tell. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sure if I all I had, if I had a rocket launcher, I think we'd be a lot closer. Okay, wait. You want to see something sick though? Yeah, I'm watching. No way. That's a huge time save though. <laughs> what the hell? Why is the, dude, the rocket launcher is so busted. No, I mean like- Oh, no! For the coat. What the He's hell? What the hell happened? Go. Oh, no. You have to choke the Bowser fight like 2,000 times. Look, it's definitely in the realm of possibility. That man is a tank. Dude, you are burning him. Oh, no. Oh, no. God damn it. Let's go. Wait, what is the timer at right now? Wait, oh yeah, wait, you restarted the- Oh, yeah. nice. Yeah, that's why nice. I say like Bowser's is like such a huge potential nice. time loss. Okay, okay, okay. I, I've scared myself after that last time. I'm playing way safer. That fight is just, it's so, it's so much. The flames do so much, you can get shot. It's actually an insane fight. <laughs> GG's, GG's, GG's. That's a wrap. G G's. Thank you so much for to playing my game. So just like that, I became the most respected name in Mario 64 speedrunning history. Remember this, when your kids are taught this story in school, just remember, you were there. You witnessed history. A man with a plan and an M16 who took on the greatest challenge ever made. Gun Mario 64. Rated E for everyone.
So this is where I'd like to put some shout outs. First off, Easy Speezy, who gave me the framework for this entire speed run, as well as helping me learn the skip in my DMs until I just gave up entirely. Also, the most important shout out is probably Mix Morris for developing this beautiful hellscape and pointing me to the speedrunning Discord that had tons of lovely people, most of which who helped me figure out most of the confusing things, especially New Guy, who actually holds the world record at 38 minutes. What the fuck? <laughs> 